government has had a long standing interest in cleaning the river. It was way back in the mid 80s that Rajiv Gandhi, then Prime Minister, launched a Ganga cleaning program. And since then, the program has been invented, reinvented many times. And at all times, the government is failing to understand that the method in which we are doing river cleaning, or we are and we are trying to clean the river is not an appropriate method for a country like India. We are taking a method from countries like the UK, like um, Germany, like Japan, like the US, where river cleaning was really about setting up sewage treatment plants, cleaning the sewage in the sewage treatment plant and then disposing it in a water body. In a country like India, most cities do not even have underground sewerage systems. So the entire investment in Ganga till now, cleaning of Ganga has been in either building the sewage network or in setting up the treatment plant and at all times as the government is, is, is finding it has a massive backlog to deal with and, the, in, and all the money that they put in, the river still is polluted. In fact, it's become a linear relationship. The more the money, the more the pollution. And so it is time to be serious about reinvention. We need to redirect the program, come up with a serious program of river cleaning, which can actually give us a free flowing Ganga once again. The solution for Ganga cleaning will be fourfold. One, we'll have to recognize that you cannot have a clean river unless you have water for dilution of waste. Today in most cases you will find in our rivers we take clean water for our drinking, for industrial and for agricultural uses and we return only sewage to it. Now it was, oh, was alright till a point when there was less pressure on the river and so the river had a time to assimilate the waste and to clean itself before the next city. But today we are getting to a situation where we are rapidly urbanizing, rapidly industrializing, and, and taking more and more water also for agriculture from the river. So in that situation, the river has no water, and what we return to it is only waste. Now, in this scenario, we can never clean our rivers. Because the fact is that our, the BOD level, the biological oxygen demand, the measure of pollution as we have, that we call it, has been set for a water body, if you discharge water into it, at 30. But the same BOD for a river which has bathing quality is set at 3. So there's a 10 time dilution that is required between the discharge of treated waste and the, the, the river for it to be not drinkable but at least bathable. Now that clearly means that you need that water for dilution and that has to be the first principle of river cleaning that our rivers must have ecological flow adequate to dilute the waste that is discharged from our cities. The second is that as you said that there is a lot of technological focus. Now the technology focus has been in building smarter and smarter sewage treatment plants. But the problem is that most cities of India and particularly cities along the Ganga do not even have underground sewage. A city like Varanasi, 80% of the city does not have underground sewage. The same is the case with Allahabad. It is worse with even smaller cities. So instead of investing more and more money in trying to build an underground sewage network where the government is constantly just spending money and not being able to meet the target, this, the approach for river cleaning has to be to take the open drain itself, to intercept the sewage from it, take it to a sewage treatment plant and treat it. But with a clear difference. If we treat the waste in a sewage treatment plant, we must not put it back into the same drain from where we have taken the sewage. The reason is most of our cities, as I said, do not have underground sewage. 
So you have, even if you treat the, the waste of a few people, put it back into the drain, it will get mixed with the untreated waste of most. So the rule has to be that you treat the waste and then you recycle it and reuse it. So you take the treated effluent and you reuse it and recycle it. And that has to be the third key principle of pollution management. So to repeat, one, ecological flow in the river. Second, don't focus on building the underground sewerage network. Instead, intercept the waste from open drains. Three, treat the waste but then reuse and recycle it. And the fourth has to be that take the open drains and do affordable but innovative sewage management so that you use the drain itself as a treatment zone which means use bioremediation, use plants, use every possible system to try and treat the waste in open drain itself. And the fifth is that you must have a complementary system for garbage management, for solid waste management. Because if you don't manage the solid waste of your city, it all ends up in the same drains which are sewage and, and, and garbage or the river. We have to stop letting our cities, uh, our rivers becoming the, uh, the, the, the garbage disposal uh, system for our cities. Now I think industrial effluent um, is clearly uh, one major part of the Ganga pollution as well. But if you look at the figures, uh, the Pollution Control Board essentially tells you that of the some 3,500 uh, million liters of sewage that flows into the river, um, uh, roughly 500 million liters is, is industrial effluent. So it is not that in volume it is very high, but the problem is that it is very high because it is local and it is very toxic because it is full of chemicals. Now, we also know that the industries along the Ganga are essentially industries of poor states. So they are small-scale industries in most cases. They are uh, industries that look to uh, cut corners and the first corner that is always cut is to run the sewage treatment plant or to set up the effluent disposal system. Um, we have tanneries, we have um, distilleries, we have pulp and paper sector, and we have um, 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 chemical industry, but all in the small scale. Now the only way to deal with industrial pollution is to make sure that you have a very tough enforcement system. Today the, in, the Indian law is so weak that the Pollution Control Board can actually not penalize anyone for not meeting the standards. All they can do is to set a Section 5 notice and then the matter goes to court where it is never resolved. So you need to have a tough enforcement system so that people know that the law actually matters, that the standard for pollution has to be met. Um, Simultaneously, we need a clear program because these are industries that work in the small scale, they are poor industries. We need a program for technology upgradation and that needs to be subsidized. We have to be very clear that pollution control technology has been developed for rich industries, for big industries. Solutions for small scale industries often do not exist. But that is the challenge that has to be met. You want a clean river, you will need clean industrial effluents as well. The tannery issue has become a very convoluted issue in my view. Um, and I'm particularly very, um, 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 very worried about how we will approach it. Because in the past, the approach has been either to relocate tanneries, which is what we did in Calcutta, uh, the High Court. The Supreme Court ordered the, uh, the uh, relocation of tanneries in uh, Kolkata essentially for pollution control. And the experience has been very poor because where you have relocated the tanneries, um, it is only added to the pollution load in the river rather than taking it away. So it's very clear that we need to come up with an approach which doesn't push the problem away. Uh, it's also a fact that a lot has been done and invested in the tanneries till now, but 
a lot has also not been done. The tannery producers say very clearly that there are plans that the government comes up with, but then they are never implemented. So I think it is time, if we are serious about it, that we come up with a clear plan for pollution control of the tanneries, that government invests, and that it is non-negotiable that the tannery owners have to also meet the standards. So it's a partnership that is needed between government and the tannery owners, and in my view, as yet, too little has been done to solve this problem. The new government has said that they take Ganga seriously. We will, I welcome that. I think that is very important commitment of the government. But it is very important that they recognize the four, uh, uh, four Gs that they will have to do to clean up Ganga. So one, they will have to make sure that they uh, redirect the program so that there is water in the river for dilution. Two, that they look at the river, um, uh, they look at every drain that flows into the Ganga and then come up with a drain-wise plan to intercept the sewage, to treat it, to reuse it and recycle it. They need a plan to treat every drain as an open drain, as an open treatment zone and they need an effective plan to treat pollution in industries by through strict enforcement. These are the four G's. If they can do this, we can get a clean Ganga. We can have a river that we all believe in to flow once again, to live again. And if we can clean the Ganga, we get the right experience to clean every river of India.